Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the second show and share in the series of shares that we're doing as part of Barnet Citizens Assembly. My name is Kelly McBride. I am the lead facilitator of the process from an organisation called TPX Impact that has partnered with Barnet Council to do the Citizens Assembly and make it happen. So what we're doing today is I'm just going to give a brief presentation on what we did in session two, which happened this Sunday, just gone from 9.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at Middlesex University's Hendon campus. So it was the second meeting uh, of the assembly. So welcome to everyone that's on the call. Uh, we know that there's going to be people joining over the course of this session um, and everyone is very welcome. These sessions are open to anyone at all that wants to come. We have no limits on numbers. So if there's anyone in your community or your networks that you think would be interested in finding out more about the Citizens Assembly, what it is, what we're doing, um, you're very welcome to invite them along to future sessions and we'll share the link for how you do that at the end. So what is a show and share? Some of you may have joined the first one, so sorry, this will be a little bit repetitive, but we're going to have new people joining every time, so we're going to share some of the basics every time. But a show and share is basically an opportunity to find out more about Barnet Citizens Assembly, to hear about what we did in the sessions, and to ask any questions you might have about the process. And I'm joined on the call by some people from um, the Barnet Council's uh, sustainability team who are also there to answer any questions that might come up for the council, because as the lead facilitator of the process and someone that doesn't work for the council, there might be some things that I'm not personally in a best uh, position to answer. So as we're going through this, of course, there's quite a few people on the call. We do please ask that you keep yourself on mute throughout the call, but we really encourage you to introduce yourself in the chat and anything you might want to say about your interest in the Citizens Assembly. And you're also very welcome as I'm speaking or just as thoughts come to mind to post any questions that come up either in the chat or in the Q&A function. So you should see a speech bubble just on the panel um, at the bottom of the screen that enables you to do that. When I've gone through the presentation, we'll then stop and we'll look at the questions that have come up and do our very best to answer them. But we do have um, 45 minutes for this session, so we'll be running until 11.45. Okay, just to get us started, and again, some of you may have heard this already, but I just want to give a brief intro to Barnet Citizens Assembly and what it is. So, a Citizens Assembly is an initiative that brings together a group of randomly selected everyday people to learn, to deliberate, and to make recommendations together. We have 40 participants coming together as part of this Citizens Assembly, as well as 20 young people coming together as part of a parallel young people's assembly process talking about the same issues. And those people were randomly selected after we worked with our partner at Sortition Foundation to send invitations out to 8,000 randomly selected households across the borough, of which we received a number of expressions of interest of people that wanted to take part. And of that, 40 people were randomly selected um, to participate. What they're focusing on really is this big, broad, overarching question. It's the fact that Barnet has declared a climate emergency. What more can we do together to make Barnet more sustainable now and in the future? So over the series of sessions that we're going through, the members of this assembly and of the Young People's Assembly will be working together to come up with a series of recommendations, prioritised recommendations for what more we can do together to make Barnet more sustainable now and in the future. And of course, we don't know what those recommendations are going to be at this stage. We don't know what the shape of them will be. Um, but yeah, we do know that this is the focus of the question. And within that, there are a series of different themes that people might be touching on, including transport, housing and buildings, nature and biodiversity, and more besides that too. Um, we are also going to be evaluating the process with Middlesex University, and we'll be using that to provide feedback to the assembly members and to Barnet Council to inform future work, because we really hope that this is the start of lots of community uh, action around, around these issues and a lot of partnership working across the borough. So any evaluation activity we do and any learning that we generate will be really helpful in doing that. What happens next? So, you know, we're still quite early on in the journey of the assembly itself, but we have given a lot of thought into what we are doing after the assembly is concluded and those recommendations have been published. 
There will be an opportunity for members of the Assembly to present their recommendations to elected representatives at Barnet Council's Cabinet in late June 2023. And given the together part of the question, a huge and important part of this process is what the community can do in partnership and in collaboration and in working together to deliver on the recommendations that come out. So there's a community action planning day that's being planned for mid-July to bring together different people from across Barnet. That might be businesses, community groups, schools, faith groups, lots of people to plan how to deliver on the assembly recommendations together. There'll be a celebration event for all assembly members and there'll be continuous opportunities for people to be involved in monitoring what happens next. And we're gonna be getting some input from the members to help shape that up, as well as lots of opportunities for people to tell the stories of both their experience and what they think we need to do across Barnet to make it more sustainable along the way. So yeah, please do keep an eye out for, for all the next step stuff that's coming down the line. So moving on to the assembly itself. So who tends to be in the room for the sessions? This is going to apply for pretty much all of them. We have our members, our 40 members. We have our lead facilitators. That's the role I play, as well as some group facilitators. And they are locally trained facilitators who support the participants in the process um, to be able to have the conversations they're having, kind of keeping the activities on track and supporting them to capture any notes that they want to take along the way. We also tend to have um, invited contributors, so they people who come in and speak or um, give their thoughts or views to the groups in different ways. Um, and we try to introduce lots of different perspectives um, as we're going through this process. And really, that's just for people to build their understanding around climate change and sustainability, to get some inspiration around a few different options or ideas or thoughts that are out there um, and to support them in their learning journey and in their deliberations as a group. We then also have some observers in the room and there is an observer programme, which I'll tell you more about at the end. Um, and they're people who just come along to watch the process on the day, but they do not uh, engage in any of the activities and they kind of sit there quite quietly, usually at the back or at the sides, just watching what's going on. Um, and we also have some representatives in the council sustainability team who are the team within the council that have commissioned this work. So I'm going to kick off by telling you all about what happened this weekend. And I'm going to start with the Young People's Assembly because they actually had their first meeting on Saturday before everyone else 18 plus uh, came together for that session on the Sunday. And here they are. Um, so, yeah, we now have 20 young people from across Barnet coming together um, to talk about that same question, how we make Barnet more sustainable now and in the future. So what that uh, group did was um, in that first session, really, you know, it was all about sharing where we're starting from, learning a little bit more about what we're going to be exploring in the next few sessions we have together and getting to one, know one another. So there were some welcomes and an introductory activity before the session was opened by Councillor Barry Rawlings and Councillor Alan Schneiderman, just as we'd done for the other Citizens Assembly. There was then some learning about Barnet's sustainability action plans and we did a world cafe type activity just to explore participants interests in the areas related to the sustainability action plan. And then there was a session on young people organising and how to work together where they talked about ideas around community and fairness. And there was a presentation there from our guest contributor, Samir Dumaya, who um, gave a brilliant introduction to the different ways as well that uh, people can be engaged in conversations around climate change, sustainability and the different roles we can play, um, whether that be people that work on particular jobs that address issues of climate change and sustainability, people that go out and facilitate things in their communities to have conversations about these issues, or actually, you know, the role of people as artists and creators um, in making sure that change happens. So it was a really, really engaging session, I have to say. Um, I think we all had a quite, a, quite a fun day. Um, and then the afternoon after lunch was dedicated to exploring some key themes that have been identified where young people really can have an influence on what is happening in Barnet. So those themes included green skills, nature and biodiversity, sustainability and transport. So there was a brief introduction to what each of those mean. Um, most of them then had a video that was shown, which is connected to the Barnet Zero campaign. They can all be viewed on the council's website. And then there was an activity or a discussion that supported the young people to think about those different areas um, and to start sharing any ideas they had. So we've already seen some ideas coming out from the young people, which is fantastic. What we did then is um, we actually took everything that happened in the young people session and put it up around the walls in the main space where the citizens assembly was going to be gathering on the Sunday so that the assembly could actually see what the young people had done the day before and the things that they were been thinking about and felt were important too. 
So what we did um, for the Sunday session, so this is all the citizens assembly, adults, 18 plus, was um, quite simple when you look at it like this, but you know, on the day, much more complex. But what we did was we welcomed everyone, shared the agenda, gave a recap from the previous session. We'll do that as standard um, for all the sessions going on. And then in the morning, we split into two groups for activities uh, and they swapped over after a break. So everyone got to do everything. The first activity was something called the strategy room. I'll tell you a bit more about that. But um, that was delivered in partnership uh, with University College London and is part of a, a broader project as well. And then we also um, did an activity which gave a bit of space for reflection and engagement with the young people's materials um, and then did a, a conversation that was setting us up for really some future sessions where we'll be exploring people's vision for Barnet. Um, so, yeah, that that was that was good fun. Uh, I'll tell you about um, both of those more in a second. And then we had lunch and the afternoon was dedicated to theme stations, we called them, which is basically hearing ideas and exploring experiences of a Barnet resident in connection to four of the key themes that we're exploring in relation to the sustainability action plan and this process. So first activity, the strategy room, what was it? Well, essentially, it was an immersive experience which used storytelling and facilitated discussion to find out what people think about climate change policies. So in these sessions, basically, just to, to imagine it, uh, we had 10 people sitting around a table and each of these people had what was essentially like an iPad. Um, and on that iPad, there were videos and some audio. Um, and that that video basically told a story um, and people watched that content. And then there were prompts uh, after those those uh, videos were viewed which led to some discussion in the groups around the key issues that they were exploring in these sessions on transport and homes and heating. And then as you got further through the session, there was an opportunity to think about kind of policy and things that could be done in relation to that area. And participants um, were asked to share some of their views and some of their opinions in relation to some of those suggested policies. So, of course, that generated a lot of conversation. And I think just the engaging format and using a slightly different format for conversation uh, seemed to go quite well. And what we got out of the end um, was a bit of a sense, actually, of people's kind of starting points around particular policy issues, some thoughts on the values connected to them, um, and then, of course, their positions on some of the different ideas and options that were shown. So we're going to be working with the team that delivered that, um, particularly the team at University College London, um, just to synthesise basically what came out of the process to present it back to the participants next time, because I think it will be an interesting snapshot, basically, of what various people across the assembly think about different aspects. Then what we were doing, this was happening in a different room, um, was the other half of the group was spending a bit of time reflecting. So this was us also being slightly responsive to some feedback from the first session where people wanted a bit more space just to connect with the issues and to talk and to get to grips with what uh, the subject matter was. So we made an open space for them to reflect on the first meeting to go around the room and look at all of these boards um, with what young people have shared in their first meeting. So what they thought and some of the ideas that were coming up from them. And just to sit down then back at their groups to share where they are on the journey to understanding more about climate change and sustainability and any reflections that they had. Um, and that picture on the right hand side is something that the young people did. We did a bit of a participatory mapping exercise to explore nature and biodiversity and just ask them to basically draw an area view of a place that they go um, to access green space in the borough and then had a discussion about access to nature and green space and um, sometimes the differences in access that people have. And that, that activity worked really well with young people, but I think it was quite interesting for um, some of the adults to see just how differently people thought about space and access to space too. So yeah, they went around the room, shared some thoughts, reflections, ideas and questions and looked at the drawings. And this is what um, their prompts were when they went back to their tables. And then the second half um, of the time that the group spent together was really kicking off some of the um, activities we'll be doing in future sessions around setting a vision. Um, so there was a facilitated activity to start thinking about our vision for a more sustainable Barnet. Um, that started by introducing what we mean by vision. We showed some uh, examples of short, snappy vision statements from some other big organisations that we think people would recognise. Um, and then we showed a video from Scotland's Climate Assembly, um, which was an example of a citizens' assembly that had put together a series of recommendations and then that had been turned into a vision. So um, we could post the link in the chat, but there's a YouTube video there that in that process, uh, they were able to take the recommendations that the people had made 
made um, and put together just a video that summarized and, and touched on different aspects of their vision. So it's quite interesting, I think, for, for people to see just how another assembly might have dealt with that. Um, and then what we did was we um, had a discussion around what we think a community is in Barnet. And we actually did an exercise that used some metaphors, just a very different way, I think, to think about this um, and ask participants to generate some ideas or principles about how they want things to be in Barnet. And this is just us kicking off and kind of uh, introducing the idea that we will be developing a vision as a group. So just that metaphor thing, um, we asked everyone to kind of think about how they see Barnet, uh, the Barnet community. Do they see it, for example, as something like a family, like an organism, like a business or something else? And, you know, just an example of something else that people came up with was they see the, the community in Barnet as a cog. And you need to have all the different parts of that cog working for it to be functioning well. So they were able to basically take these metaphors and then extend them a little bit to think about community. And um, we also showed them what young people had shared when they were talking about community on the previous day. And this word cloud here um, basically comes from a discussion among the young people where they were asked, what does community look like to you? And you can see that they used words in there like union, an organization, a family, togetherness, belonging, support, inclusive, happiness, et cetera. Um, so yeah, so the adults did a, a slightly similar kind of exercise, but with a different um, input and, and way of thinking about it. So yeah, so we're just in the process now of working through all those ideas and principles and we'll be bringing them back uh, to the assembly to share with them before they kick off on the next exercise where they're going to start developing their vision. Um, and then, yeah, we had a lovely lunch break and the rest of the afternoon was spent visiting theme stations. So the way that this was set up was that we had four different contributors and each of those contributors had a different station uh, that was set up. So like a different physical place where people were gathering and the speakers after um, a series of time would uh, kind of, you know, present basically a little bit about some big ideas connected to that theme, some things that they knew were already going on across the borough. And then they facilitated a conversation um, with the participants. And there were also facilitators at each of the stations who had some prompt questions or activity prompts for people to reflect on the content that they heard. I think an important thing to say about contributors throughout this process, which I know I mentioned earlier, um, is that we are bringing in a range of different contributors who have different perspectives. And we're always saying constantly to the participants that, you know, when we bring in contributors, you will hear some particular ideas some particular views, but they're not the only ones out there. And we want to introduce and give you the opportunity to explore as many different ideas as possible. Um, so yeah, obviously these, these kind of contributors spark brilliant conversations, um, but we do want people to kind of hear other perspectives and share their own and to go out and explore um, what else is out there too. So yeah, that's always important to say, I think for a citizens assembly. But yeah, it, it went well. So housing and buildings, we had Saeed Ahmed from Energy for London. For transport, we had a station with Ben Samuel from Better Streets for Barnet. For natural environment and biodiversity, we had Carol Wright, a community gardener, and for sustainable consumption, we had Ranjit Singh from the Library of Things. So they were all able to talk about different aspects of housing and buildings, transport, natural environment and biodiversity or sustainable consumption, um, and they rotated around the different groups of participants. That was it. I mean, yeah, it was it was quite a packed day, really. Um, you know, at the end of this this sort of day, you've heard quite a lot of information. You've had quite a lot of discussion. Of course, you kind of probably just want to sit back and, and reflect a little bit. So we've got a bit of time ahead of our session on the 20th of March. Um, but what's happening next is we're just going to keep building now and we're going to keep building momentum. Um, so we are scheduling the next session that's on Monday, 20th of March from 6.30 to 9 p.m. It's an evening session. And there we're going to start developing the assembly vision for a more sustainable Barnet and exploring what it takes for change to happen. So as you can see, there's a link between what we did this time and what's happening next time with hopefully a bit of breathing space for people to make um, some links between subject matter in between. And that's it. That's what we did. Um, so, yeah, just to, to finalize my bit. So please do keep following the process, keeping it in touch. We have the website uh, page that's now live on engage.barnet.gov.uk forward slash Barnet hyphen citizen hyphen assembly um, and information is going to be continually updated on there including a link to rewatch this recording do keep signing up to show and share, share sessions via the eventbrite page we'll post a link to that in the chat um, and as i said earlier absolutely anyone is welcome to attend so do share the um, link with your networks 
And also do sign up to observe via the online forums. That means that you can physically come along to some of the assembly sessions and observe what's going on. Um, we are now oversubscribed for the two March sessions, just to let you know. Um, but, you know, we'll see about the balance of, of people that have applied and make sure that we can try and get people along to one session they're interested in. Um, but yeah, just to let you know that's the case. And the dates for future assembly sessions are currently the 20th of March, 6.30 to 9. We've got a show and share scheduled for Wednesday, the 22nd at 1 p.m. And then Wednesday, the 29th of March, 6.30 to 9. And we have a show and share scheduled for 11 a.m. on Monday, the 3rd of April. We do also um, have the weekends planned in for April and May, but we are just going to review actually the feedback that we've had from participants um, in the last session about how they're feeling about weekend sessions. Actually, is there a different way we can organize things that work for them so we're being responsive to feedback? So I'll let you know if there's any changes, but that's currently the plan. And that is it from me. So yeah, thank you so much for listening. I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm also going to stop the recording and we're just gonna have a look at any questions that have come up. <laughs>